Hey guys, this is MathCamp321 bringing you another lesson on solving a more challenging literal equation. Just a reminder, a literal equation is an equation that has a lot of variables in it and your objective will be to solve for one variable in terms of the other. You might want to think of the equation like a formula. You might have something like area equals length times width and it might say solve for L in terms of uh, W and A. So in our example here, this more challenging one, I give you this equation W equals X plus Y plus Z over Z plus A plus B and I want you to solve for Z. So this is, a, this is kind of a tough one. So I've set this up like a two column proof like from geometry. So I'm going to put all my statements on the left and I'm going to justify all of those statements with uh, justifications on the right. So to start, um, I'm going to put as my first justification given, much like you would do in a two column proof. Okay, so for my first transition from step one to step two, I'm going to put the W over one, which is a legal maneuver, you know, W and W over one are the same thing. And now I'm going to cross multiply. And I'm going to say that W times the quantity Z plus A plus B is equal to X plus Y plus Z times one, which is just X plus Y plus Z. And the process which brought me to this step was cross multiplication. So that's what I'm going to write over here for justification number two. Okay, to transition from step two to step three, I'm going to distribute the W through the expression in parentheses. And as I write each term, I'm going to write them in alphabetical order. So I'm going to start with WZ plus AW plus BW. And then the right hand side is going to remain the same. Again, the justification for this step will be distribution. Okay, to transition from step three to step four, we're going to do a really highly technical maneuver called having a Z party. And what I mean by that is any term that has a Z, I'm going to move to the left side, and any term that doesn't have a Z is going to go to the right side. So I call that having a Z party. So I'm going to ultimately say WZ minus Z is equal to X plus Y minus AW minus BW. So all the things with a Z are going to go to the left and all the things without Z are going to go to the right. And for my justification, I'm going to write Z party. Now to transition from step four to step five, I'm going to factor out the Z from the left hand side. Notice that on the left hand side there are two Z's and my objective is to solve for Z. I've got to get it by itself. I've got to get it isolated. So to get it isolated, being that there are two of them, I'm going to factor out what's common and what's common is the Z. So I'm going to take the Z out and I'm going to be left with an expression W minus one. Now if you're not sure how I got this transition, you could check yourself by distributing the Z back through. Z times W in alphabetical order is WZ and Z times negative one is negative Z. So that little check tells us that we're correct. Now the right hand side is just going to be a rewrite. Now what I'm going to write for my justification is uh, GCF factoring or factor out the GCF. Now my, my last step is to get Z completely by itself. So I need to get rid of the expression W minus one. And to do that, I'm simply going to divide each side by W minus one. And the final justification is going to be division. Now in many textbooks that have literal equations, they're going to want you to identify something called restrictions. And this operates on one basic principle, and that is that denominators of fractions can never be zero. And there's two places where we have a fraction here. The very end result, and in the very beginning we also have this uh, fraction here. And the denominator can never be zero. If you were to take your calculator, for example, and just type in 10 divided by zero, you'd get an error message. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a restriction on these variables, and I'm gonna do that right here at the bottom. So I'm gonna write the word restriction, and there's actually two. The first of which is that W minus one cannot equal zero. That would be the first restriction. And some students might prefer to say W cannot equal one if you wanna move that negative one over. 
And then if we look at the original problem where there's also a fraction, we need to say that z plus a plus b cannot equal zero. So here's an example of a more challenging literal equation problem, and I've also included at the end the restrictions, and I've justified each of the steps that allowed me to get to the answer in this two-column proof format.